right. Well, hello, everybody. Again, this is Tom Randolph. I want to welcome you to the webinar today. We're excited to go through some overcoming objections today. We, and this is part of our Integrity Short-Term Care Initiative webinar. So I'm a little frazzled today, so I had to jump on late if some of you were on early and heard me. But anyway, uh, I'm really pleased to have Dennis Reiner here. He's on the road doing traveling, uh, traveling today out of town. And he's always in a different spot than I am, uh, unfortunately, uh, for these calls. But he's actually probably in his hotel room today, and he's doing some training uh, on this topic to some agents in a different state. So, Dennis, I'll let you jump in and say hello. Hey, good morning, everyone, or midday to everyone. Yep, and you bet. And we're we're going to go through, and you guys are really pr privileged today to have the opportunity to have Dennis on. Dennis is one of the uh, top sales trainers in the country, and Dennis and I have both had the opportunity over the last 27 years, I think, that we've worked together since I've been here at Golden Care. So we, Dennis and I have helped design products, and, and we've been really blessed to have the opportunity to go out and train agents like yourselves and to do live uh, consumer webinars and seminars as well. So Dennis has trained thousands and thousands of agents and he's very much a master of the sales training side of this. So I'm gonna let Dennis jump in and talk a little bit today about the objections. And if you've been on our other webinars, you know we have product training and you know we have sales training, starting the conversation, et cetera. And again, I'm not gonna go spend a lot of time on this slide because I usually start all the webinars with this slide if you've been on them, but it's a huge need, a lot of gray hair in America. So we wanna make sure that you as agents take the opportunity, whether you're selling Medicare, final expense, anything else, just to start the conversation. We'll show you how easy it is to do in our other training. And part of that is the objections because at the end of the day, most people haven't talked about this and it's something that's really a big need for people to have some type of help and protection for their short-term extended care. So the big thing I'll talk about as I introduce and get let Dennis start rolling is that, you know, we talk a lot about when we start the conversation. And remember, a lot of this is just plain old sales 101. Whatever product you're selling, you know certain things that we all should know about objections if we're selling in the trenches is that, remember, obviously the smoke objection, first one, usually doesn't have a big bearing on the buying decision. They're just kind of saying, you know, maybe you sold a med sup and you say, oh, by the way, before I let you go, I want to make sure, do you have your extended care taken care of? You know, and usually they'll say, I'm not sure what that is. And then you'll explain a little bit as you go into our sales training on starting the conversation. And basically a lot of them will be, oh no, I've already got that. Or my wife has something in mind, or we, you know, we've already talked about that. I think we're okay there. A lot of times those are just simply the human nature of things where, hey, you know what, I just bought a different product from you. I don't know if I want to dive in and have my brain start thinking about needing something else right now. So a lot of times they'll try to throw you off with a really quick little uh, easy to overcome smoke objection just to just to kind of start that. And I'm not going to go too deep in that because I think most of us know that uh, no matter what product you're selling. So at the end of the day, what we want to do is really eliminate those objections before they come. You'll hear that in our other sales training. When we talk about in a presentation, you go through and you start, you do the warm up, and you guys have a huge head start because you've already built some rapport with your client and a lot of times a lot of rapport. So that's one of the things we talk about in kind of our introduction or short term care 101 webinars is that you guys just have a great opportunity to go out and start a conversation much easier than a lot of other people do. But that's where we're going to talk about today. And Dennis will give you more of a background overview of how maybe you can go in with these pre-decision objection stoppers and kind of confront them ahead of time and then follow Dennis's advice on how to go through and, and kind of nip them at the bud even before they come up. And that, that gives you a really nice position of, of authority in the presentation. So Dennis, I know I'm zipping through that because I know you're running and gunning out on the road, but I just wanted to make sure we had the opportunity to get in and, and have you offer insights to this slide or I can go to the next one or whatever you sure. think. Sure, yeah, let's, uh, let, let's go ahead, Tom, that's good. That's important uh, information. And I, you know, if you want me, I can just jump in and you sure. know, um, it, it's, Again, a lot of this is not new if you've been selling, but sometimes what my uh, experience in both Tom and I have had the pleasure of, of training literally thousands, tens of thousands of agents. And uh, and sometimes the longer we're in the business, sometimes we start taking shortcuts and we forget some of the blocking and tackling, the things that we learned early on, on, as Tom said, sales 101. So, you know, what goes through the client's mind is they're already thinking, hey, 
do I really need this? You know, uh, do I like this? Can I afford it? You know, the old age is really true that the person convinced against their will is of the same opinion still. And certainly with products that require them to reach into their pocket and make a financial commitment on an ongoing basis are products that uh, they have to really be convinced. And so uh, they're sometimes just looking for reasons, as Tom said, um, and you want to help them to, to, to make that good decision. So as we talk about some of the things that people fear about, um, it's, it's a normal part of the process. Um, and Tom's going to put these up here and we'll just talk briefly about these and we'll move into maybe some techniques here. But, you know, fear of making a decision, fear of making the wrong decision, that there's, you know, people uh, kind of can sit on the fence and, you know, uh, uh, the, the lack of, of trust, maybe trust in, in whether it's hopefully not trust in you, because as Tom said, you're, you're really talking to the low hanging fruit, the people that you have a relationship with, but there is a lack of understanding and, 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 uh, you know, we have other training on this um, on, and Tom's going to take it to take us to the recorded site, our, our uh, site, but we record all this as well. Uh, and we have a training on seven reasons why people don't, don't buy. And, uh, and the important thing is, as Tom said, it, it's how do we handle it on the front end? How do we be proactive? And so if we go on and, and talk about some of the standard objections that, that you kind of see, and they vary, uh, but generally speaking, uh, e each of these, no matter what the product is, you're going to hear the client say some of these. And Tom, I think we can go on and, and we'll, we'll talk about some of those right now in terms of... Um, um, you know, if you're in the Medicare space, then then of course one of the big misconceptions is that Medicare will will uh, will take care of it. And there's different ways to handle that. There's uh, ways that you can handle it by you know taking them to some of the Medicare uh, .gov materials that are put out, Medicare and You, and the supplemental guides that really spell out specifically what Medicare does cover and what it doesn't cover. Um, but the other common ones are my family will take care of me. Um, there is certainly it will never happen to me. And I will just caution you that one of the key things early on in your interview, and as Tom said, we have a whole training on going through the interview process, is if you don't get them to acknowledge it, it, uh, in, the, in the first, you know, three to five minutes of your conversation during that, that warm up of, of time that you're starting in, that their health will change then I promise you that it doesn't matter, you know, what the price is. It doesn't matter what the plan design is that when you get done to the end of the interview, you're going to get another objection and it's going to be that they want to think about it. And they're going to then come back and maybe say to you, Hey, I, you know, it's really great information, but you know, I really believe this is never going to happen to me. And so we hear this all the time. We hear about, they can self-insure. Tom's going to share some information on that as well. Uh, we hear about the procrastinators that feel like they could buy coverage later. Um, they can't afford it now. We'll talk a little bit about how we budget that, but let me give you a formula that I think if you follow this formula and remember again, kind of as you are thinking about your, uh, the, the questions that you're going to ask and kind of the, 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 um, the flow of your presentation, if you will, Take these objections just conversationally off the table. And if you'll do that, I think what you'll find is that then, then they'll be ready and they'll be receptive to hearing about what Tom said about the plan design and everything else. And you you can, again, you can take health off of that objection as, as well, that, hey, I don't think I'm healthy enough or, or what have you. But here it is. Let me give you kind of a, if you want to call them four rules or if you want to call them four steps or just uh, four reminders, but it's gonna go like this. Number one is you surface, as I said, you bring it up. You bring it up, you're proactive. Number two is you isolate it. Number three is you address it. And number four is you've actually overcome it. So let me give you an example um, about this one, especially when, when people say it's too expensive. And Tom and I have done many consumer workshops over the years. And I remember we had a broker dealer that wrote millions and millions of, of, of premium for us. and and. Uh, for several years in a row, we were doing as, as much as 100 consumer workshops. So I had I heard this loud and clear all, almost every time when I would um, be doing this. And they would they would say that, you know, um, that the cost was the, the, the major objection. And so 
part of surfacing it and the way that you isolate it is this technique. I would say, and I will tell you, this will hold true for any objection. You can use these words for any objection and you just change it out just slightly. But the way I would handle it as far as on the cost one is I'd say, let me ask you, Bob and Mary, you know, we're, we're talking about this and we've, uh, uh, and you just mentioned, I asked you if you've looked into um, extended care or long-term care or short-term care, uh, whatever semantic you want to use to, uh, to share with the client. You said that, yeah, those plans, you know, well, you looked into it and it was just, it was too cost prohibitive. And so the way I isolate that is I say, let me ask you this, other than cost, other than cost, because I, I recognize that, you know, the cost of care is high. And of course, there's a correlation to some degree as far as what we pay for what we get. But other than cost, was there anything else that held you back from moving ahead? And now what I've just done is I've taken that objection because can I handle a cost objection? Absolutely. Because as you've seen in some of our previous training, we can show you how you can you know, have foundation plans and get these down, these premiums so darn affordable and how you also can have comprehensive plans and go the other extreme. But the point is, what I want to know when I'm surfacing that objection on on cost is I want to know, is there anything else? Because if, if that client has three more things, they're holding them back, I want to hear about it right now before I actually get into the to the recommendation. And so... You can use that with my family. My family will take care of me. And, um, you know, there's some of the plans that we have today, as you know, that actually have a provision by which family members can be paid because these in, these short-term care products, what we call extended care uh, uh, plans, are indemnity. They're full indemnity. They're full cash. But most of them do not allow for a family member um, uh, where you have to, you know, have an agency or a uh, home health aid, someone like that. Uh, and so you may know uh, when you're encountering that as a serious objection, what may race through your mind is, okay, I was thinking about going with XYZ company, but maybe in this case, I'm going to go over here because I know I can overcome that objection. So when you address it, as I just did by saying other than cost, and then trying to, again, when I'm addressing it, I'm trying to find those those bookends, if you will, what is the, the premium elasticity does this client have? Because they may be thinking when they looked into it, oh, these premiums were two and 3,000 a year. And you know, in the short-term care market, these premiums can be 30 to 50% lower than what they may have looked at with long-term care. So again, as, as Tom uh, gave great advice about the, the, the smoke screen, each of these are objections. <clears throat> and each of these very simply, if you can just say, you know, other than your family taking care of you, is there anything else that held you back from moving ahead? Same situation. I isolate the objection. I then can address it and say, you know, the good news is, Bob and Mary, you guys have been married for 40 years. And I understand that Mary, uh, and you try to throw a little humor in there, has been pretty much taking care of you that whole time. Wouldn't you agree, Bob? He says, yeah, she really has. Well, isn't it about time if something were to happen to you and your health were to change that Mary could actually get paid to take care of you? Because I have a plan that actually that will pay a family member. It'll pay your daughter who's that RN who lives down the street. So again, just all of these objections, surface them, isolate them, address them, and then therefore you've overcome them. And when you've overcome them, they now are more receptive to listening to what it is as it relates to the plan that you're going to offer. So Tom, I know that when we talk about self-insuring that you know, there's, uh, that's an instant, hey, I can just put money in the bank or gee, I bought Amazon and got a 2000% return, <laughs> whatever the story might be that, that people think. And normally what it is when they're self-insuring is that the money that they have, they want it to be allocated to do about 10 different things. They want it to be allocated to uh, for retirement. They want it to be allocated for them to trip to take trips and travel. They want to do everything else, and they also now want to pay for their care. So, you know, something has to happen. And, Tom, I know on self-insuring, uh, we've done some math, and, and you can share with everyone exactly, um, you know, a good way to overcome that objection. You bet. You bet. Thanks, Dennis. And, again, 
one of, one of the things that we'll finish up today and we'll go through, actually, I'll probably touch on each one of these and, and Dennis and I will touch on them. And I know if, if Dennis has to go at some point here, I know when he's on the road like this, sometimes he gets pulled away. Uh, but I do want you to know that that's the beauty of this is I can't stress enough. Number one, uh, that, those four rules for objections is so powerful. And if you're not aware of that, if you're new to sales at all, remember that's old school sales and that's very, very hardcore objection overcoming on the isolation. So that's I hope of anything else you take away from this. The rest of this is logical and we can show you an easy and we'll put a cheat sheet on the site that we'll show you at the end that uh, where to get this stuff on the site. And we're right in the process of having my team put together a little cheat sheet to help you with some of these objections, real simple bullet points. But anyway, uh, on the on the leveraging side of it, as far as self-insuring, that's one of the easiest objections to get over uh, for people is number one, these plans are so, so flexible. It's literally, this is just an example using one of the products that happens to be Omniflex. And uh, I just wanted to show you, this is the Manhattan Life product. And if you've been on our product training, you know, we have great solution of products. And again, I'm not pushing just Omniflex here. It just happens to be the product I'm using in this example. And I wanna make sure you know the number one ability of all these policies out there is the availability. So we talk a lot about state availability and then we talk about underwriting. That's the two big things that we wanna see where somebody has the ability to pick the right plan. And we have a policy design webinar that we've done that we we help you in that area as well with some case, case examples. But anyway, uh, going into this with the 65 year old, cause a lot of you on the phone call might be Medicare agents. With this, if we just do a pretty simple $100 a day plan. So this is, again, middle of the road, 100 bucks a day, that's $3,000 a month. Remember, these are indemnity plans, so they pay no matter what, if they get a day care, it'll pay the full 100 bucks. So really nice, strong little plan. These are full 360 day plans here for this example. And for a 65 year old, you know, you come up with it's about 60, $62 a month, $739 and 44 cents a year. So very affordable premium for a lot of people once you explain the leveraging. And basically, you know, again, you don't get into all these numbers as much with your clients unless you have to, but I want you as agents to understand, look at how strong this product can be for somebody at 65. If you're looking at them saying 65 year old at 739 a year, remember Omniflex happens to have that prescription drug benefit. So theoretically, a lot of people at 65, the average person has 27.3 prescriptions and refills a year. And remember, they get reimbursed on that up to $300 per year right out of the gates without being on claim. If you're not familiar with Omniflex, it's a nice positive of that plan. So you could really almost, we talk about that being a net premium reducer. So you could talk on a secondary level about really it could be 439 bucks a year uh, instead of 739 if they use that whole RX. But either way, Look at how well leveraged this plan is. If I went on claim in six years with an Omniflex plan, so for some reason at 71, they they had to go on claim, the break even at that point at the full premium is only 45 days and you've got all your premiums back. 27 days if you're looking at the $439 a year, so under a month of coverage there for break even. And remember, with this again, when we get into our overall STC 101, what do we teach you? These aren't long-term care. If you're a long-term care agent, take the hat off or tilt it to the side because with short-term care plans, you can use these policies anytime you have an ADL or activities of daily living deficiency. So your clients are going to use this plan for things like, oh, you had a hip replacement, need a knee replacement, had a surgery, had a fracture that you're not laid up for 90 days, but you might be laid up for 15 where you're going to need help. So there's no 90 day requirement on the claim triggers. So using this 45 days doesn't mean one claim has to be 45 days. It could be three claims theoretically or two claims. So whatever the case may be. So 45 day break even is low, 27 days is lower yet. But the key with this is remember at hundred bucks per day, that is 36,000 a year that you could use for home care and theoretically go home care into a facility. So really a $72,000 per claim leverage that you have with this policy. And again, that's not including restoration of benefits. That's just per one single claim, potentially, they would have 16 times leverage, or if you use the 439, 27 times leverage. And basically what that is, is 
27 times the premium you paid in after six years would be available for one claim if you needed it. That's how powerful that is. Even if you looked at a 65 more uh, typical on a more catastrophic claim, which again, 65, 75, 80 at age 80, 15 years later, you paid in more premium, obviously, but I'll tell you what, 111 days break even or 66 if you use the uh, $300 RX benefit. And look at the leverage still, six times, 6.5 times or 11 times that dollar cost average for the leveraging on the claims versus the premium. So again, these are detailed numbers that you don't want to bring up unless you have to, because it's it'll be one more thing to potentially confuse your clients. But it is something to keep in the back of your mind to say these policies are so incredibly leveraged. You don't even have to give a d exact dollar amounts and do the math. All you have to tell them is, boy, at this premium dollars, look at how much per claim you'd have compared to your $700 premium. You don't need to talk specifics, but you need to make sure you tell them. That's why, even if you could self-insure, why would you? This is one of those things that you could definitely decide that it would be a smart move financially for them. Hey, yeah, Tom, so let me just jump, jump in yeah. on that for just a quick second, because, you know, when the client's telling you that they want to retain the risk, what Tom just laid out is important. And one of the other... Little techniques, again, you can come back to surface, isolate, address, and overcome. And you can say, you know, uh, Bob and Mary, uh, you know, you mentioned about, you know, using, you know, retaining the risk. Let me ask you a question. Do you, could you see yourself in the next in, six years, or could you see yourself in the next 15 years, whichever one you want to use, where something could happen? You could break a hip, uh, you have a hip replacement, you could have a fall or fracture, where... You might be laid up where it, it could it could take you know up to 27 days in this example, or do you see yourself you know not right now but way down the road that that you know uh, that maybe two months of uh, of needing assistance and I'm not saying you're going to need it today but could you see that and when they agree with you then you can come back in and you can say then then why are you trying to hurt mom and they're going to be puzzled because when you say mom M O M you're going to say, yeah, you're hurting mom. Mom represents my own money. Why do you want to use your own money when there's the power of OPM, which is other people's money, which is the insurance company? And so, again, Tom said there's a balance between logic and emotion on how we do this. And that's a great example because, you know, people just, it's a knee-jerk reaction to think, hey, I'll just pay for it. Because, you know, because what they're really saying to you is they never think it's going to happen. That's the bottom line. And so... All of these objections in terms of um, that they are listed here, you know, I can buy coverage later. I don't know, if, Tom, if we have an example on on that one as far as because people are always procrastinators. They're thinking, you know, hey, I want to buy closer to my claim. I, I'm only 65 today, and I, I, I read a statistic that the average claim age was 80, so I think I'll just wait till I get closer. Um, again, I don't think in most cases you're going to encounter a lot of these objections because – you're working with, you know, yes, new people that is a prospect who don't, who, who may not know you. Uh, they may not, uh, there's not that rapport. There's not that years of trust. But, you know, when you're bringing this to your client, you're bringing it to because you know that they have a need for this particular product. But yet, again, be prepared with, with you know, I, I love the one, it never happens to me. That's why I come back and tell you that admitting it can happen You've got to take these objections off the table. You you cannot wait. And objections fall into two distinct categories. Number one, they're either a misunderstanding or number two, they're a perceived drawback. So as we went through that list, some of those are just misunderstandings. But you know, when someone tells you it's never going to happen to them and they really are hard fast on that and they said they've had no family history and everything else, you know, after you've taken a run at it two or three different times, then why, unless you want practice, I don't know why you would stay in that home or why you would stay on that Zoom call for another 30, 45 minutes, because I'm going to tell you, they're not going to engage in moving ahead to purchase. And of course, you know, you can parallel the objections to other things that they own and, uh, you know, car insurance, homeowners insurance. Um, the probability of someone using dental is is extremely high. But, you know, Tom, I know there's probably some other thoughts you have on that, but I wanted to make sure that 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 we share with the group that when you're handling objections, 
you're really not asking people to change their mind. No one wants to be in a situation where they're suddenly changing their mind about uh, self-insuring or changing their mind about uh, the fact that they don't think it's going to happen to them. So I say this when I when I'm handling objections, Bob and Mary, I'm not asking you today to change your mind about this idea of retaining the risk. But what I am asking you to do is to make a new decision now based on this new information I just shared with you. Isn't that a reasonable request? You see how easy that is? It's powerful. I'm telling you, all the things that don't work, Tom and I will never tell you about because there's plenty of things that we've trained on and what we had to have, you know, uh, that we had to basically work out and find out where the puddles were. But these things, these techniques work. And uh, and so, Tom, I wanted to share that as well. You bet. You bet. And, I, and again, I did want you to know you saw me jump, jump out and we have we have all these different objections and different things for you to, to help you answer them. So remember, you're going to have access to that uh, from the site. But I do want to know, I want you to know that a couple of them, like, for example, on this one, where a lot of people are going to say, you know, this just goes back to the old LTCI days, right? It's people are saying, well, you know, I don't know if I'm ever going to use it enough. And if I did, it'd probably be small enough. I can self-insure and, and those type of things are real, are real common. Right. And one of the things that, we have that is a simple one is we say, you know, I hope, remember it's like your homeowners and everything else. You probably have homeowners. Even if you paid your house off, you have homeowners. And obviously we hope you never use it, but usually you realize it's pretty smart money. And we talked a little bit about leveraging your dollars and how powerful that is. But, you know, when you just look at the overall odds, this is why smart people make decisions to buy insurance, right? I mean, look at your house, the odds of having a house fire that's going to be significant damage is one in 1,200. You know, the odds of having your car have over $10,000 worth of damage, one in 1,200, or f excuse me, five in 1,200. The odds of being hospitalized, 105 in 1,200. And then when you start looking at the odds of needing extended care, and this is not a long-term care like a year, or this is not like 90 days worth of care, 840 in 1,200. That's where that 70% comes in, you guys. So this is just a little graphic that you can use if you're a screen sharing, but a lot of times you just talk it through and you don't even, again, have to give exact dollar amounts. It's one of the things we try to do is keep it simple. We'll have a cheat sheet for you where you can say, you know, your odds are this. Some people like statistics. Some of them say, oh, I hate when you get into all these statistics. But at the end of the day, this is a nice graphic just to show you just how common it, it does happen. And it is something that people need to think about. And again, one of the things, this is a short little webinar today. We obviously can't hit every single objection that you'd ever have, but we did want to make sure you understand. We have all of these things in here that we have available for you. And we will have this on the cheat sheet, like I said. So a lot of people, this this is the uh, self-insure. And I'll let you jump back in, Dennis, uh, before we, we wind up. But, you know, I'm going to self-insure or I can't afford it, either one. You know, you say, you know, I remember that's the difference. That's the leveraging again. Would you rather have a $300 bill now that we can take care of to cover you? Or would we rather have the 5000 if something, God forbid, happened where all of a sudden you're starting to get zapped? And there's a bunch of statistics out there. Again, if you're a stat guy talking about the number of bankruptcies in America that are because of health costs like this. Uh, so, again, there's lots of different things we can do. And I can talk a little bit more about some of these, but Dennis, go ahead and jump in if you need to. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, Tom, on the scales, you know, it, it's when, when you're doing that, I, I I say it this way. I When the client's given me the objection, it comes back down to that premium again. Then I, I say, you know, with all with all due respect, respect uh, Bob and Mary, when we're talking about budgeting today, you know, $100 a month for each of you. If you're struggling with the idea of setting aside that money, if you can't afford the premium, then you really can't afford the event. And boy, that hits home. Absolutely. Because the event is what Tom just said. Are you going to come out of pocket again using mom, my own money, and pay 5000 6000 7000 So do you want to write the small check, the check that – that you can write out, you know, take that money right out of your bank account that fits into your budget? Or do you want to react to this problem down the road and have to write the big check? And how long can you write that big check for until you're actually going to be out of money? 
And then, you know, so it's not that you're trying to scare people, but you're trying to get them to, to see this for what it is, that the leverage, and again, they've used leverage in every other aspect of their life, as Tom just said, the homeowner's insurance, the auto insurance, you know, the dental insurance. You know, why is it that you've chosen to use um, the insurance company for those items when the probability of you, something happened to you is so much greater you know, so again, you got to keep it in perspective. And, you know, we have a, the site that's built to help you and all these tools are available. But, you know, objections are just, hey, uh, it, it's the nature of of of, you know, of any time that you're having these conversations. I mean, the client that di- typically really is willing to pull out that checkbook and, and write it in a hurry is probably the client that's got something going on health wise. And uh, and maybe all of us have experienced that as well. Where hey yeah you know, okay let's just uh, let's just get to it. Well then when you pre-screen for the health you find out that that you know there may be some issues there. And so but all of these objections and there's probably others but those are the most common and uh, and they're very easy. You know once you do this a few different times um, you'll find that it'll become old hat and uh, just use that formula that we've shared with you. Absolutely. I know Dennis uh, does have to run to do a a presentation here. So Dennis, I'm going to let you sign up. I'm going to touch on all these one more time really briefly, and I'll take care of that and show them the site, Dennis, and I think they'll be in good hands. And again, I'll show them where to find all of our other recorded training. Excellent. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining us. And I'm actually going to, uh, to speak and talk about another part of our business, which, uh, you know, starting the conversation with a, uh, with a, a group, um, and this is one of the few live uh, face-to-face trainings that we get a chance of uh, of having the opportunity. So uh, um, uh, you're in great hands with Tom, and Tom, thanks for for uh, uh, being understanding on uh, yeah, the. No problem. You know, sometimes we have to. We're, we're double booked, so uh, uh, we appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Dan. Hey, and everybody, before we before we sign off, I'm not going to hold you much longer. I know we're sitting at the half hour plus mark, and I just want to make sure you do know, like I said, we'll have a cheat sheet in there, and like Medicare will pay for it. It's page 57, I believe, of your shopper's guide. I mean, where it talks right in there is a paragraph saying Medicare does not pay for custodial care or extended care. So those are simple ones to get over, the Medicare side of it. If you jump down to the Medicaid side of it, you know, the government Medicaid, we all know, and and I'm not going to get deep here and bore you to tears with this. I've been doing this for 27 years with Golden Care. We sold over a billion dollars in long-term care over the years. So one of the things we know is that there are ways. There's trusts out there and stuff for the big catastrophic care out there that people can hide their assets. We know they're out there. But one of the things I, I usually stress with agents is tell them, just go with the logic side of it. And I tell people, you know, anytime you look at the M words, Medicaid, Medicare, it's great. We have the government programs trying to help out. And whether you're left, right, you know, Democrat, Republican, independent or anywhere in between, you know, at the end of the day, even with the best intentions or people trying their best to help, when you really look at it in the, in the deep end, we have a lot of gray hair in America. We have seniors in the baby boomers turning 65 and 70 faster than you can count. And at the end of the day, you really look at it and say, Think about, we've all heard, if you've been alive and watching the news, we all know that Medicaid budgets are getting stretched thin. And we all know that every state pays part of the bill with Medicaid and the federal state pays part of it. And some of the states are opting out of Medicaid because they're saying we don't get enough from the feds to make it worth it to have to provide this care. And even though your grandma or your grandpa or your parents found a way to say, oh, we can hide our assets, we don't have to worry about it, the government steps in. Remember, at the end of the day, logic rules the day. Do you really think in the future, in the next 10 years, do you think the government's going to say, wow, we came up with a windfall. We have way more money than we thought. We're going to go out and really bump up Medicare or Medicaid payments. That's the part that you just tell people. That's why I do what I do is I specialize in trying to get families ahead of the game, protect themselves so that they don't have to rely on Medicare and Medicaid, especially Medicaid. Because when you really look at it right now, I know there's a couple states down south that have two people on their Medicaid asset recovery staffs. And you know what? Of course, they can't go out and find all those dollars that people are hiding away and penalizing people. At the end of the day, 
when the states really get in trouble, if they don't jump away from Medicaid completely, what they're going to do is they're going to hire a couple people for 40 grand a year to say your jobs to go out and find those assets and make sure people aren't hiding assets from the government and taking advantage of them. So uh, again, I'm a big fan of Steve Mosley. He's been around forever. A lot of you know who he is. He's out trying to change how the Medicaid rules work. He's been doing it for years and years and years, and it's a certainly an uphill battle. But at the end of the day, this gives you choice and independence, and it gives you the ability to say, let's get a plan so you don't have to worry as much about that. And we can keep you out of the nursing home longer and, and do some really good things if you protect your family today. So again, it goes deeper than that, but I won't go into that today to bore you with it. Uh, my family will take care of me. Dennis already alluded to the fact, excuse me, one of the nice things about these plans that we have in our integrity short-term career por por portfolio that I'll show you in a minute is that we have policies that pay cash. Uh, we have the great GTL short-term care plan that pays a one-time benefit through their T-care option on the healthcare that's built in. And you can have the ability to have the uh, family member get a $3,500 uh, fee to help if they're once they're certified. And with Omniflex, of course, we have our Fast 50 benefit, which we to help take Mutual of Omaha from number 10 to number one because of that cash benefit, we found that 70% of the people started with cash and 70% of the people stayed with cash because cash is flexible and it's great because there's a lot of married couples who say, I'd like my spouse to take care of me and get some of my premium dollars back or a family member or friend or church group, et cetera. So remember, Omniflex has the built-in Fast 50. So remember to check into that if somebody really is hardcore about my family taking care of me because most plans obviously have to exclude direct immediate family members. Uh, it'll never happen to me. We already talked about the odds. That's that 70% number where you say, at the end of the day, the facts don't lie. This With this plan, especially over and above long-term care, if you're a long-term care salesperson, remember long-term care, you have to have two of six activities of daily living or a cognitive impairment. But that two of six, which most people go on, the two of six, you have to have a 90-day certification from your physician saying you're going to need care for at least 90 days. With short-term care plans and these home care plans, we don't have that 90-day certification. So again, much, much, much more common to have people go on claim and to use restoration with these benefits in the short-term care arena. So never happened to me is kind of a no-go with this because at the end of the day, everybody knows somebody who's had some type of surgery that laid them up or some type of accident or illness, that's why that percentage is so high. It's not fluff. It's not a lie. It's true. Almost everybody's going to have some type of care that you're going to use these policies for in the future. Okay. So again, that's more of our product training side of it. Uh, self-insure, we already talked about the leveraging. That one is actually really easy because if somebody has the money to self-insure, then it's pretty easy. They're usually pretty smart with their money. They've built up a nest egg and they know the power of leveraging and ratios. So that's one of those that you get into saying, yep, exactly. You know what? You've got some dollars to save and some dollars to protect. Boy, if you can get leveraging at 11 to 1, I tell you, they're pretty smart to go ahead and get something in place so you don't have to worry about it, especially since we know there's a really good chance you'll use it. Remember that stat, 90% of married couples will have at least one of them use their plan. So if you're a married couple, it's almost not if, it's it's definitely a when, right? Can't afford it now. We already talked about that. The big one there is a little bit of health too. Remember the biggest ability of any of these plans is the availability. And we talk about state availability, and then we talk about underwriting. And I'll show you that on the site that we have tools for you to be able to go in and do a great job helping you decide what plan they qualify for. So remember that the biggest thing about waiting that we talk about, and this is a little bit in the long-term care arena as well, but the biggest thing is say it'll never be less expensive than it is today because if you're priced on the date of your application on your age. So we want to get this now because it's going to be more expensive next year. It's easy to put off, but I'll tell you what, Worst case scenario is, God forbid, something happens to you next year or the year after, and all of a sudden you say, man, I had Tom talking to me, and then I didn't pull the trigger, and now, now it's not only too more expensive, I just can't get it. It's really expensive because you buy these plans more with your health than you do with your checkbook. We use that, that a lot as you get into the conversation. 
remember we buy these we buy these plans nowadays almost more with our health than with our checkbook so we want to make sure that we can we can get you insured okay so that's one of the biggest and easiest ways to stop people from putting it off and then i can always buy coverage later that's the same same concept right is same deal saying yep you can do it later but one of the things we do want you to know is the health and the cost but also you can go in then and talk about stacking coverage with both those affordability and coverage one of the nice things that a lot of agents don't realize is when we get into designing a plan, we talk a lot about the fact that you don't have to pay for 100% of what it, what the costs are. When we show you where you can go and get the costs of care in your area, one of the biggest things you have to realize, you don't need to have a Cadillac plan or a Rolls-Royce plan every time. You can go in there. We can do that if you want. We can. Sh I show you in our, our product training how you can get a million-dollar policy potentially with short-term care. Very, very powerful. That's why we use the word extended care because short-term care, a lot of people think are little 90-day plans. These can be really powerful plans. But on the flip side, they're really flexible. So you can also go in and design a plan that's going to say, you know what, I understand right now you have kids in college, or I understand right now you have these other costs, or you want to get your house totally paid off, or whatever it may be, you can always say, the nice part about these plans is they play nice together. These are indemnity benefits. So I can sell you a plan today that's going to cover car part of your risk, and it's going to be super affordable, and we're going to make sure it doesn't hurt your budget. And then I can put it in my tickle file, and we'll come back, and I'll talk to you again in a year or two, when things settle down a little bit, we can come back and we can add another policy to this. If your health is good enough, we can add another policy to this and we can go out and stack those policies. And you can do that with these plans very easily and, you, and very effectively, by the way. So remember, if you have somebody who's worried about costs, don't start thinking, well, I don't wanna sell them this plan because it's nothing because every one of these, these plans have been priced to say, you're gonna get, almost equal leveraging with the smaller plans as you are with the larger plans. So dollar for dollar, you're still well leveraged. Even if we sell what we call a smaller or baby plan today, it can be a nice one that'll grow in the future with another stack policy on top of it. These plans, again, pay, don't have any coordination of coverage worries. Okay. So very easy there. I'm going to show you here. I think I babbled at you long enough, and I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me. I'm going to go over here really quick. If you can still see my screen, hopefully my password managers. Oh, I don't need it for this. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to go to the site, and hopefully it won't take too long. When we're on a webinar, it takes a little bit extra. There we go. This is the Integrity Short-Term Care site, and, and whatever marketer got you on the call today, hopefully it'll steer you to this site. Because what this does, if you look at it, and I won't go through an entire training on this because we did that before, and we'll have we'll show you where that's recorded. But you can go in here and look at extended care. Here's sales and marketing. This Insta Pivot is an unbelievably strong tool if you really want to get into it. And sometimes the, our partners in the integrity world will have somebody who will be trained to go through and help you with Insta Pivot and do it for you. But basically, in a nutshell, this Insta Pivot tool walks you through every question possible that could be on any one of these type of products that we're showing you below here. And it'll show you what products are available in the state you're working with. And it'll show you based on any health condition or any type of medications they might be on, it'll show you which policies you can go ahead and apply for. So remember these, if you have long-term care, turn that hat to the side. It's not a 35 page application. These are literally one page of underwriting questions at most, sometimes as little as one or two questions that you have to ask to see if somebody qualifies. So very nice tool. Remember the Insta Pivot, check it out. Sales and marketing, I'll get into in a second, but down here below, we have training on all these products on our comprehensive short-term care plans for the short-term care initiative. We have the Omniflex Manhattan product. We've got the Recover Cash GTL, and we've got Wellaby's Essential Care. Wellaby's the newest comer. That's uh, really a nice, strong product that that is only available in ten states now, but they'll come out with more states. And it is we'll have state availability, obviously, with any of these products if you click on it. And I'm going to really quick go down here to Home Care to show you that here's the home care select plans. These are home healthcare only plans, super wide net on the underwriting, almost anybody can get it. 
And with the Manhattan Life Home Care Select and GTL, two nice products that complement each other, and it will be a nice choice for you and your clients. And True Freedom is a non-insurance plan that we have training about that'll go in and help you in all 50 states. So now you can look at your clients and say, wherever I'm selling in any of the 50 states, we have something available for them uh, if they need it for, for helping protect them and their families. So this is a really super easy plan, unbelievably wide net for underwriting. Just about anybody you're in front of who's not getting care today or living in a facility is going to be able to get that. And it's a really nice, really well-leveraged prepaid home care plan. So check out the training on all of these. And I do want to show you before we go into sales, the Omniflex plan here, just as an example, all the products are the same. We'll have a state availability map. We'll have a little video if, if it's available for the product. And then we go into product highlights, which is a bird's eye view of what the product does. And then we've got lots of different things for presentations and brochures on these drop downs. And again, I'm not doing training here, so I'm just showing you. Go into these product areas and you can see all the different things available when it comes to selling these products or helping you learn these products. Okay. So that's the product side. And then on more importantly for a lot of you, sales and marketing. Remember, we're specializing right now in helping people. That's what this site's about. Helping people who aren't necessarily already in the short-term care arena or long-term care arena. Maybe you're selling Medicare and we're going to talk about starting the conversation, how easy that is to do for you. Here's some stats for extended care. And then down below in the sales area, you can see here, Product training, 18 different videos on here talking about different things from products to how to start the conversation, et cetera. Down here, we have another way to get the Insta pivot. And then we have marketing assets, et cetera, for you to go out and talk to other agents or consumers. We have a full consumer kit that'll help you with the social media or with trying to get consumers on your own. Most of the time, you guys have a huge advantage because most of you have been sent by your marketers uh, who are integrity partners because of the fact you already sell Medicare. You already have a list of people that you work with every year during AAP or afterward that you can talk to about short-term care. Okay. Down below here is even more videos. These are great fireside chats, right? From Dennis Reiner uh, that he does a good job with sales strategy and some of them are called fireside chats. So again, we have the tools. We don't throw you out of the airplane and hope that your parachute opens our goal is to try to give you all the tools you need to go out there and actually be successful. And again, I'd love to get on my soapbox for 10 minutes and tell you, don't pass by this opportunity because we know it'll help your retention. It'll help with your, your pocketbook because it's not a hobby. We pay really great commissions. These products pay good commissions and a lot of times really, really nice renewals. So these are products that'll help your, help you and help your clients and it'll help you with retain, retaining clients, and it'll help overall with the gray hair in America, which is my, my most important goal. I go by the old Zig Ziglar. The way to be successful is to help as many other people be successful. So uh, I'm trying to do that with you folks as agents as well. So uh, if there's nothing else, I'm gonna go back really quick and I'll close her up. Gotta figure out where we are. Let's see, sorry. There we are, I'll go here. I got to have my closing slide or else it won't look good on the recording. So again, I wouldn't be doing my due diligence. If you're not contracted with all those, those companies, first thing to do, contact the marketer who got you on this call, whether it was Golden Care or any one of our integrity partners. Excuse me, contact that, contact those folks and make sure you, you get set up with these carriers. And they're going to understand what you're looking for when you talk about the short-term care initiative. Okay. And otherwise, remember, check out the site, check out our other training, and hopefully we will see you on another webinar soon. This is Tom Randall from Golden Care. And again, for my friend Dennis and my cohort, Dennis Reiner, thank you very much for attending today. Appreciate it. The next step is yours. Contact your marketer for more information and to start offering short-term care solutions to your clients. And be sure to sign up for our other short-term care hot topic webinars.